Hi everybody, I'm Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and in my Skillshare class today, I'm going to be taking us out into our yards, and we're going to be painting our houses. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm out in my front yard, and we are going to learn how we can paint a watercolor house portrait in this class today. I'm going to go ahead and head on inside and start painting. I'll be showing you in the different lessons the techniques on how you can paint brick, stone, wood siding, some landscape techniques that you can do to create your trees and flowers and plants that might be in your yard, and then some tips and tricks on how you can photograph your own home for a reference photo or finding reference photos online using Google Maps. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started, and thanks for joining me here on Skillshare today. For this first lesson, I want to go over how we can find good reference photos or take photographs of our home that are very usable for creating a house portrait in watercolor. Uh, one of the methods that I've used many times, especially for homes that I can't go and physically photograph, is to use Google Maps. They have a feature for street view photos um, for I'm pretty sure most of the country has been uh, filmed on Street View by the Google car. So I just typed in my address um, here and then I clicked on the photo that is available for Street View and it allows you to kind of pan around and zoom. Uh, so you kind of want to just fiddle around with it until you can get a nice uh, in centered picture that gives you a nice front view of your house. And it might not be a great photo. You might have to look in some other resources if this isn't going to work for you here. Uh, so basically what I did was then just take a screenshot of that or a screen grab of your screen or just use it directly off of your screen to trace onto your paper just by taping your paper to your computer monitor or your iPad. So um, I didn't like the photo that I could get from this. It was a fairly old picture as well and all of that landscaping has changed. The brick is no longer red. The house is no longer green. This is really old and I don't even know whose cars those are in the driveway. So this is from before I lived there. Uh, they haven't been by our house since then, I guess. So I'm not gonna use this picture, but it might be a way that you can use a photo of your house. So another resource that I found is to go to your county assessor in, in the United States anyway. Um, pretty sure most counties have the assessor's role. So you can just type in your address to in a property search. And then they should have the latest assessment photo on your home. So we had our house assessed when we refinanced it and they had a picture of it from a couple years ago. So this is a really great one because they actually took it during the winter time when the trees didn't have any foliage. So there's nothing blocking my house. And they had a really great straight photo of my home that I could trace all of the roof lines and the siding lines. And it's gonna be perfect for what I need. It just isn't the right color because even though we painted the brick gray, the house is still green and none of the trees and bushes are there. So I'm going to use that as my guide to trace, but then I'm going to use the photographs that I took to kind of show what the foliage and the landscaping looks like and what color my house is now and all of that as my reference. All right, and the other option, if you are not able to find a picture online of the home you're wanting to paint, is to just take your own photo. And here's some tips on how to get good photos. So we want to avoid taking pictures that are too far back and you have trees and bushes covering your house. So I have two large trees in my front yard that pretty much block most of the house. Now this is really great for reference if I wanted to paint far away, but I want to paint the house as my focal point. So I really can't see it here. And it's not very good for me to trace the outlines of the house as well when I want to go to transfer it to my paper. It's right angle, it's straight on, but I can't see the house. So I moved over to the side of my yard. And while this is an okay, but still not great reference photo, it's much more usable than the last one because I can actually see the house in it. But I'm at a little bit of an angle, which can make things a little bit more difficult when you're trying to do straight lines because everything is gonna be at an angle. And this can be a little bit more challenging, but it's still very usable if you are okay with that. But I can see the side of my house there that goes back and I have a lot of things missing off to the side that I can't see. Here I kind of stood in my tree almost in the front yard. I had to hold some branches out of my way to take this picture but I got a really nice straight photo that had all of the roof line in it 
and it shows just the bushes on the side that are blocking the front of the house anyway, but it's a really nice straight on shot of my house that I could trace as a reference if I wanted to. Uh, this is a really great example of a photo and you'll want to try to get a really straight photo just like this if you're going to be using it as your reference. If someone else is providing you the picture, you may want to suggest to them the tips that I just did, making sure it's really straight on and it's not off to the side or an angle and you don't have a lot of trees blocking it in the front so that we can see the main part of the house. You can always paint in extra elements like trees and landscaping later, but this is gonna give us the main outline of the house to trace. And before we move on to the lessons, I just wanted to show you one more example of a reference photo that I used. This is my parents' house. They just built it and they moved in just a couple of weeks ago. So as you can see in the reference photo, I tried to get a really nice straight on picture. There was still a little bit of construction crews getting around, so I didn't really have a lot of places to take the picture from. So I kind of stood on top of my, or stood on top of the doorway in my van because uh, my kids were still in the van. I didn't want to leave them. So you can see the top of my van in the picture, but I got the whole house in the picture and I got a nice straight uh, on picture. And then as you can see in my painting that I did, I ended up adding in some trees to it later because they don't really have any trees growing yet, but I kind of took a picture of what it might look like in 10 years with the trees. So I added in the landscaping that wasn't quite grown in yet. And I added those trees. But you can see some examples of the brick and stonework and the siding that I did as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start the lessons here for the next one. And we are going to be covering the different uh, types of materials that can be on sides of the houses, which will be the brick, the stone and wood siding. All right, I am just gonna start out um, by making some rectangles to represent a wall or a side of a house here. So I'm just using one of my business cards to trace on here. I've got an eight by 10 sheet of fluid 100 watercolor paper here. And I'm just gonna make a few little rectangles here. We'll do bricks, stones, and wood siding. And we're just going to use this sheet for all of our uh, the individual lessons here. So I'm going to do my, my house textures here in my rectangles. And then I will use this side over here to show you how I do some of my trees and grass and foliage and stuff like that. Okay. So we're going to start out by just doing some washes across these because we have to do the background color of all of the uh, the side of the house. So whether you're doing brick, stone, or siding, it's not stark white behind it, unless you have white siding, but I'll show you that here. We'll kind of do a half and half on this one. All right, so we'll go ahead. We'll start out with brick, and I'm just going to wet this all down with my flat brush. So that I can do a nice even wash across the side of my house. Now keep in mind when we go to do the house portrait you're gonna have things like windows or doors that might be on the side of your house and you'll just go around that and if you feel more comfortable you could also do some masking fluid that would go around a door. All right so bricks are generally red sometimes they're gray brown and kind of just match to whatever color you have for your uh, brick but for me I'm gonna do um, kind of a red brick here. So I have kind of like a scarlet color. That would be a really good This is deep scarlet from Daniel Smith. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use that color And I'm just going to do a nice uh, even wash across My rectangle here. This is my wall My exterior wall and we can talk about shadows and stuff uh, after we get this done, but um, it'd be a little easier to explain as we go through the house at the in the class project. So I'm just going to let that dry. Uh, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll go ahead and I'll do my other two washes for my siding and my uh, my stone. So the next one will be stone, and those can be in lots of different shades on your house. You probably oh, I still have a little red in that brush. My goodness. All right, try to get some nice clean water on there. Okay, 
So I could do lots of different shades of gray. You could mix your own gray. Um, I have some stone on my house that was originally um, some limestone and then the previous owners painted over it with red and then we had to paint back over it because we couldn't get the paint off of the stone. So now it is a light gray, but you can kind of see it looks like a light gray brick. Um, the portrait I did for my parents' house, I'll show you that, is it's got stone on the face so there's like uh, little um, circles and stuff over top of this. So that's what we'll be doing. We're making like the circular stone because the brick on my house is kind of like this, what we're doing for the brick on the top, but it's going to be gray, not red. All right, so I want to do a nice gray wash and I'm actually just going to use uh, some neutral tint. But if you wanted to mix your own gray, you could do a mixture of a blue with an orange or like ultramarine with burnt sienna and just kind of play with it until you get a color that you uh, think would be a good background for whatever color of stone you might have on your house. So there I got my stone wash. And now I have a gray sided house and the pictures I showed you, it used to be kind of a green. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but it was this sagey green color, but now we painted it a light gray. So I'm gonna do light gray because that's what color my house is. So I'm just gonna do the same exact light gray. And even though it's wood siding, I'm still gonna do a solid color, one solid piece on here. And then I'm gonna use uh, this marker, this Tombow dual brush marker or another layer of watercolor you could also do if you don't have the marker uh, to create the shadow lines for the siding because it is all just one color but then we're having the lines of shadow where the sun is showing you in the picture there's a little shadow underneath the edge of the siding so I actually found that this Tombow brush marker it's a really it's in the grayscale set it's N89 and it is just a really really light gray and it's perfect for doing your lines for your siding, adding in shadows under your eaves. So if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend it. You can get one for a few dollars. They sell them um, as singles in a lot of different craft stores. Or if you buy it as a set, I got it in the grayscale set, which I will put a link to the in the supplies of this um, so that you can see where I bought that. I actually bought it as a set off of Amazon and I got it as a warehouse deal. So saved a few dollars that way. But I know Michael's has the sets, Hobby Lobby, places like that. You can find them as singles as well. All right, so my brick is not quite dry, so I'm just gonna go ahead and help this along and dry it really quick. All right, so when we're thinking about this brick, you know you're, it looks like rectangles, right? But we're gonna be doing this on such a small scale when we really look at bricks. I can show you on my picture here. I don't know if you can see. That we're really just seeing small little lines across here because this is about the size what I'm gonna paint on my eight by 10 sheet. And even if I did it a little bit bigger, it, they still would not be very large rectangles. So really, we're just going to be adding a, a wash layer of some small line, very thin rectangles over the top of this to create a brick texture. So using that same exact uh, scarlet color that I used for my background wash, I'm just going to layer that on top. And I'm just going to start doing one row at a time and just leaving little gaps. And I'm just using a smaller round brush here. This is a size four. And then the way they lay bricks is they have them overlapping in their joints. All right, and if it helps to turn your paper um, sometimes that is useful. And this is really just about practicing 
the textures before we move on to painting it on the whole house. So this is just a little practice sheet. We practice doing different widths here if they're really big bricks. Maybe you have a more up close picture and they show them with more detail. So just kind of play it by ear and whatever your picture looks like, use that as your reference. Here, that one row, I got a little bit taller. My gaps were a little bit bigger. So, like I said, we're just practicing here. I'm losing my overlap here. All right, so just go ahead and keep moving up and give yourself some practice with bricks. And I'm just gonna go ahead and speed the video up as I finish this and then we'll move on to the stone. Alright, so there is a whole little rectangle of bricks I practiced there. So, uh, like I said, just want to match that up to the brick color. If you don't have red brick, maybe there's brown, different variations. If you have uh, a variated brick color, you can just kind of uh, randomize up the different shades here. Have a couple different shades and make random little lines across in different shades. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about when I go to do the stone here because uh, we will do lots of different shades of kind of gray and some browns here. So I'm just getting, uh, I've got some neutral tints, some of the sepia, and I'm just going to get a little black as well. Okay. So when we're doing the stone, uh, usually they're mostly rounded, but they're not completely round. Sometimes you have some pieces in here that kind of oblong. I'm just kind of randomly starting out with this color and then we'll fill back in and add the other colors around it. But stones are really, they're not perfect. They are just random shapes and this might be a little bit larger scale than what you might want. Um, so make your, make your shapes smaller if that's the case. So just kind of try to give the idea that these are stones. And then I'm just leaving the slightest little gap between them for where they would be mortared together.
All right, there's how you can do some stone. And like I said, if you are making a, a little bit different scale, you might want to make smaller pieces, but that just gives you a general idea of how we could do the stone. So now for the siding here, I am going to just go ahead and divide this in half. And show you two different ways we could do this. Okay, so if you don't have one of these grayscale markers, we'd probably just want to do the same color that we made our siding background with. And I'm going to use actually a really, really small brush. A size one here. So using that same gray, I'm just going to show where the bottom of the board is. I'll just go across. And really we're just doing the shadow of where the light is hitting the bottom of the board because the way that the boards are they're overlapped and then at the bottom uh, you're getting the shadow of the board above that overhangs it and just remember you are using a really small brush like this they don't hold a ton of water so you will need to reload your brush every few strokes And it, I kind of started, I had my paper angled and I started going uphill a little bit, but if you want to avoid that, you could always just get a ruler out as well and do your paint lines across that. So I'm going to show you here how I'm using this brush marker as well. It's just giving that same gray, but it's transparent because these are water-based. So this will give you, uh, your other color from underneath will show through. Like I said, if I wanted to, I could use something as a straight edge, too. Um, if you are wanting something a little more crisp looking. Okay, so there is some different techniques on how we can do the different types of materials that you might find on the outside of your house. If there's another one that you have on your house that I didn't think of, um, I know there's lots of other different types of siding as well, but most of them are generally going to follow the same. Some of them are vertical. We would just change the direction of your siding then. So instead of doing horizontal lines, do vertical lines. Um, if there's something else that you are wanting to know how to paint and I didn't cover it in this lesson, I can always update my class. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the class discussion and I can add um, some additional lessons on different materials for housing. This is just the ones that I've encountered most commonly. So um, if you have a curiosity about another one, please let me know. Uh, the next lesson we'll focus on some different aspects of the home uh, landscaping, which would be the trees and foliage and flowers and things like that you'd find around your house. All right, so some of the different technique brushes that I have in my collection would be very useful for doing some of this and maybe some of them you have maybe not all but uh, if you have any of these kind of sponges or even just an old kitchen sponge that's clean uh, and just cut a chunk of it off you can use this very effectively for foliage especially in the background so if you have a lot of trees that are behind your house we can use this to dab on um, tree foliage in the background um, if you don't have sponges but you might have one of these deer foot brushes these are really, really nice also for creating a very similar texture that is to this is we're just going to use that to dab the paint on for tree foliage. It's really good for that. Another brush that I really like for adding some landscaping texture is this Filbert Grainer brush. I also have some flat grainers, some little stuff from my brush case fell out of there. <laughs> This one's a really good one too. Uh, it's just a grainer brush and we can use this for doing grasses, especially in the foreground of your picture where you might see a little bit more of the grass. So I'll show you how you can do that. And if you have some taller or maybe ornamental grasses, using something like a dagger brush would be very useful in making big long grass blades. Uh, our house used to have a whole bunch of humongous ornamental grass that was like 10 feet tall right on the side of our house and it would get stuck in our windows when we opened it and we dug it all out. But a lot of people do have that around their houses, especially if you have a very wet area, you might have a lot of ornamental grass depending on where you live. So I'll show you how you can paint. We'll do some trees, some grasses, 
And then I'll show you how you can just do some kind of general plants that you can put in the front, like maybe some hosta type plants or just uh, kind of giving that uh, illusion of foliage in front of your house. So none of it is going to be very detailed because we're seeing it from afar and we're not going to be seeing uh, super highly detailed hostas in the front. We're just going to be seeing the, the color and the shapes basically of what we're seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and start out showing you how you can use a sponge to create some tree foliage in the background. Now with this, I recommend uh, wetting your sponge in clean water and squeezing out the excess. We'll set it over here and then getting uh, your paint on your palette ready to go. So here we've got, this is a little deep sap green and I do a little green gold. Basically what I'm going to do is paint my sponge. You could dip it in here, but then you're going to lose a lot of that paint into the inside of your sponge. And we don't want to be pressing down so hard that we just end up with a circle. We want to get the texture of the sponge. So I'll show you here. So now we get really nice, uh, kind of a, a marbled texture that is showing j all of the little gaps and nooks and crannies. We can mix some colors here together. And I still have a lot of white space showing through. So this looks really, really close to a far off tree, you know, if we had the trunk on it. But generally, this is going to work really, really good uh, if you have trees that are growing behind your house. Like in my example of my house here, we have a tree in our backyard that you can see visible from the front and it pops up here. So I could use this sponge to do a little tree foliage coming out from the top of my roof could also use it for um, these lilac bushes that are on the corner of my house and some of the bushes that are on this side. We also have some lilacs over here, so I could use that. Um, I could also use this for my grass in the foreground so I could show different uh, textures here. I took this picture earlier. My husband had just mowed the lawn, so there's a lot of dead grass clumps in the front. <laughs> so, uh, this is a really, really fun technique to try out. And like I said, if you don't have one of these fancy little uh, sea sponges, I got this in a pack at Hobby Lobby for a couple of bucks. They're just little craft sponges and they come in all different shapes in there. They're natural. Um, you can just use your kitchen sponges and cut off a couple little chunks of it. And it's going to have those little holes and nooks and crannies that you're going to give, uh, give you this white space that you're left off with. All right. So another way we can do that same type of foliage is using a deer foot brush. And I'm going to get it damp and get most of the drippy water off of it and then dip into my paint. And it just gives a, a different texture here. So I'm, I'm going to use this for the same area, but maybe that's a little more full. And you see here the difference here. I'm getting just different shapes. So this is just a different way that you can get some of that tree foliage that might be in the background. As well as if you have a tree in the front, you can use that to fill in the leafy treetops. So, all right. So if we have maybe some grasses we want to add, I've got um, this filbert greener here. A little green. And I really like to do these portraits in the spring or summertime. So you can put all of that extra color of the green grass and the, the trees in there. It just makes everything a little more vibrant and colorful and not so drab if, if you did bare trees in the winter time. So um, if you have pictures of your home in the summer uh, and it, you can get some great pictures here. All right, so I'm just going very, very lightly with this grainer brush to give myself some grass. So like I said, if you had some ornamental grass or something, it probably wouldn't be quite this big actually. All right, so let's pretend this here is the side of our house. This is the corner. And I have grasses growing along the side. Probably go right along the edge of the house here and go up over the front a little bit. And I just add some of the grass coming off the side. I'll go over that a little bit with a darker green so you can see it better. I just add those tall grasses there, I have my ornamental grass growing on the side of my house. So you could use a grainer brush like that, or you could use a really small round brush like this size one, and you'd get the same, but you just have to make a lot more strokes. There, so there's my, my tall grass growing along the side of my house there. 
Okay, so if I wanted to do uh, maybe some other big tall grass blades, I could also use a uh, dagger brush to do some tall grass blades as well. And it's just very similar to using that one. I'm just, it just gives you a little bit of a thinner stroke than if I used a, the round brush. So very similar. There's my, there's my tall ornamental grass. Okay. And this is another thing if you were doing, maybe if you have a tree in the front and you have a lot of tall grass that grows up around the edge of it, or some plants, this would also be a nice addition to the base of a tree, uh, just adding those tall grass pieces that are coming up around the trunk of your tree at the bottom. All right, so let's just talk about maybe some small plants that you might have in front of your house. Like a lot of people have hostas here in the Midwest um, and shady areas. You might have some other kind of green hedges or something, but generally, uh, what we're seeing here like here i've got some irises and peonies and you don't see the individual leaves what you see is just like different shades of green and i've got some dark shadowy areas so basically what i'm going to be doing is just making some shapes with my brush so i'm just going to take some different shades of green here and fill it in Kind of just almost dabbing and just making some little shapes. This would be a nice little hedge in the front. If I have another one next to it. Just make the idea or the shapes of that. And it, like here I've got some of those irises, so maybe I'll just put a couple bigger um, strokes that go up around it. So then I have some other kind of foliage. You can just do kind of a, a look like this. Um, if you have like a box hedge, maybe you have a hedge in front of your house here, just do the same type of thing and just add your, uh, just don't make it as rounded like this because mine it kind of humps up. So here, if I had more of a squared off hedge, I'm just gonna leave some space in there and then just do some different shades of green to show shadow light so i'm just dabbing here I mean, maybe you have some hedges in front of your house like that okay so there is some suggestions on some different kinds of landscaping if you have flowers in there uh basically we're just going to keep doing the same type of technique here that you'd have the green and then you can add in a few little uh, pops of color here and there. So maybe if you're taking, uh, doing it in the springtime and you had some tulips, you could just add in some little dabs like that to show that color is there uh, because we're not gonna be seeing up close pictures of the, of the flowers. It's all very um, from far away and we're just getting that hint of, of flowers. All right, so the next little part that I will go over is uh, how we're gonna go ahead and sketch our house and some tips and tricks on how you can find photographs and take photographs of your house. All right, so I did reference back to these pictures uh, in the previous lesson there, uh, especially in the landscaping part and then when we talked about the brick and the siding. Um, so these are the two pictures that I'm using for my reference. This is one I just took this, uh, this afternoon outside um, when I was taking my videos for this class here. So you can see we got a lovely bird nest growing in our front light. Um, we have this barrel that is too heavy to move and we've been too lazy to move, so I'm not gonna put those in mine. I'm also not going to paint in the big power line going to our house, so that's something. Uh, and because of this tree, and I didn't have a helper to help hold branches back. I'm actually just going to use this picture that I got from the assessors page. And I'll show you how I find these pictures next. All right, so I've got my picture that I took for my reference for my painting. So I'm going to use this to reference my colors and my new door. Uh, this is my old old photograph from the house from the assessors page from before we did our painting and 
changed our front door and I've got my light pad here and I'm going to use this to trace very lightly the outline of my house onto my paper. All right, so the paper I decided to use is a 100% cotton paper that's really great for doing landscapes with because the water absorbs really nicely. This is Fluid 100 brand paper. And I'm going to be using this graphite aquarelle pencil from Faber-Castell. It's the HB hardness, so then I will get the lightest possible line. I'll go ahead and just turn my lights down a little bit so that I can see my light pad a little better. And I've got this turned up. Uh, and I'm just going to try to center my house in my picture. And you might need to print it off a couple of times, or if you aren't able to print, it is possible to actually use your computer screen as a light box and just tape your paper onto your computer screen and trace it while you're doing that. Um, so that is something you can do as well, or your iPad or whatever you used to find your photo or take your photo with. So basically, I'm just going to trace the roof lines the sides and I'm going to kind of lightly sketch in the general uh, the doors and windows. I'm not going to do the lots of detail on it, um, but I just want to get all of those elements in there so then I can work around it. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and set my reference photo off to the side here so that I can look back for uh, just where I have my plants and things like that. I just have a general outline of my house here. I kind of put in where the windows are. I didn't do the middles of the windows or the doors. Uh, and then I have my roof in here. 
I didn't put in the big power line. I didn't draw in any of the plants and foliage because I'm just going to paint those in. Uh, basically what we're going to do is make a landscape photo, but our house is the focal point. Uh, I am going to tape this down to a piece of board. So that it doesn't buckle and warp when I put water down on it. So. All right, that completes our process for our sketching and just getting everything prepped and ready. And we'll go ahead and start on our class project next and painting your house and just combining all of the elements that we learned in the lessons and how you can paint your own house portrait. All right, we should be all prepped and ready to start painting our house. And the first thing that we're gonna do is paint the background. Uh, we're gonna put the green down here for our grass and then we're gonna put the blue sky in and do the clouds. So let me just put some of this stuff off to the side here. I had quite a bit of stuff out. All right, I'm gonna get one of my paper towels ready because I'm gonna use that to lift some of the paint off for the clouds that I put in my sky. And I've got my flat wash brush here. I'm gonna get some clean water. And right now I'm just gonna uh, fill in the top part of the uh, paper because the sky kind of cuts off right about here. And then we're seeing trees and stuff in the background. So I'm just very carefully going around the house because I don't want my blue sky to bleed into my roof line. So just get a nice even wash of water across there. And the reason I'm doing a blue sky versus a hazy gray sky is just I just want it to be a more cheerful painting. If you want to do that kind of a style and you want to show more of a wintry theme or fall, uh, maybe you don't want the bright blue sky, especially if it's fall, you might have a little bit more of a gray tint to it. It might be hazy. Um, it could be a really pretty painting to do fall foliage as well. So my personal preference is to just do them as green because I just feel like it's a little more cheerful and that's just what I like, but everybody has their own preference on this. All right, I'm just gonna double check, make sure I don't have any big puddly areas. Just gonna spread that water out. I'm just kind of looking, tipping my paper here. All right, so for the sky, I'm gonna use um, some cobalt blue. It's kind of darker here in the center when I look at my reference photo. I'm not too worried about getting the blue so much over here because I know I have some trees coming over here, so I'm not going to cover that too much right there. All right, so I'm going to lift some clouds out and just put some clouds in my sky. I'm going to kind of crunch up my paper towel a little bit and dab it down until I have lifted off enough to make some clouds in my sky. All right, I think that's enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and move to this bottom part of the painting now and put in where my grass would be. 
And I'm just going to do a nice little even wash of uh, some really light green right there. And then we can go back over that with some texture, just like we showed um, in the leaves and landscaping lesson. I showed you how you can use a sponge to do some texture. And I guess I do have a sidewalk here that I don't really want to put in, so I'm not going to put my sidewalk in. And I also have a driveway over here, but I'm going to omit the driveway too. <laughs> That's what's nice about doing this is that you don't have to do all of the elements just because maybe you have an ugly old shed on the side of your house doesn't mean you need to paint that there. In fact, I don't like the color of my front door right now because we haven't had a chance to paint it. I'm going to paint it the color I want it to be. And maybe in a year or two, I'll actually paint it. <laughs> I mean, everybody has things about their house that they don't like. We're always doing work around here, I swear. So every year we do something new to the house. This year it's home office remodel. Thanks to work from home for my husband. All right, so I know my grass is not solid. I'm going to add some texture over the top of that after that dries. Okay. I'm done with that wash brush for right now. I'm going to go ahead and just dry everything so that I can do my next step. The house is actually going to be the last thing that we paint. We're going to do all of the other stuff around it first uh, because we will have things like your plants and your bushes are going to be in front of your house. So we're going to put those over the front because of watercolor being transparent. I don't want my gray brick to show through my green trees uh, because right here, my lilac bushes cover that corner of my house pretty solidly. And I have my peonies up here that cover that bottom part of my uh, my house, so I don't really need to do the siding part on that bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just do the background trees. I've got, there's like a pine tree back over here. There's some other kind of a tree, our oak tree in the back. And then we have the neighbor's maple tree you can see poking through over here. So... I'm going to go ahead and just do those background trees and the bushes and then we'll do some texture in our grass and my landscaping and plants right up here. And I think right now, uh, this picture right now you can't really see, but in the springtime we have a whole bunch of flowers that come up here right now. It's just a bunch of dead stuff. So I'm actually just going to add some landscaping up here just to complete the picture. So I'm just going to put some of those kind of um, generic -y bushes and flowers like we did in the lesson here, I'm just gonna kind of put some of this type of a foliage in the front. All right, let's go ahead and start doing that grass. So with that sponge that we pulled out, uh, I'm gonna just get my greens here for my grass. So this is like a sap green I'm using and I'm gonna mix in some of this green gold and then even a little brown and yellow in there. So maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. Just getting those colors ready on my palette and I'll do a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint that on my sponge and just kind of dab into the grass. This is going to give me all that texture in the front. I'm just going to paint different bits on there. Oh, here, and we got to be careful not to drag the sponge or get too much of the paint in one spot. 
I do want my background wash to just kind of show through a little bit. All right, there's my grass. All right, so I've got a tree that comes up behind here. And so I don't go over top of my roof. I'm just going to use a little bit of masking tape just to mask that off. And if you don't want to use masking tape and you have masking fluid, totally use that. I could have used that. I just didn't want to have to peel it off. So me being lazy. And for this tree, I could either do the sponge technique or I could do with the brush. And I'm going to go ahead and do the brush. I'm going to get, I have this round four and I want to make my tree. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use that deer foot brush. That would be a good one for that. I'm going to get some of that off of the brush there and just kind of use that to dab in. There's my tree in the background. I'm just get some different shades of green. All right, so I've got neighbors got a tree over here as well. And in my reference picture, where I was standing, kind of, we have another oak tree that hangs down the front. I'm going to omit that. I don't want that one hanging in the front. This is just about if you maybe don't have a lot of trees in your neighborhood and you wish you did, or if you have some young trees, especially if you have a new build. Uh, the picture I did for my parents, I made their trees a lot bigger than what they actually are in their front yard because they literally just built this house and they moved in two weeks ago. So... Uh, they just had fresh sod and nothing had been really grown in yet. So I just go, I went ahead and I used some artistic license and just created bigger trees for them. And then our neighbor on this side has got, let's see, you can see kind of off to the side, there's another tree there. That one's more of a, of an evergreen tree, so. I'm going to go ahead and use my round four and I'm going to get a different shade of green. That one's really, really dark. Get this undersea green and I'm going to mix a little bit of indigo with that just to give myself a nice, really deep green. And that's going to come off to the side off here. I'm making it a little bit higher and off to the side than it actually is, but like I said, it's I don't I don't need to do an exact photograph of this house. I just want to give the idea of all of the elements that are there. And the main focus of the picture is the house, not all of the neighbors' trees and things like that that are over there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take that tape off very carefully up some and I didn't get that tape down enough I still leaked onto my roof there all right so how to fix that get my brush really clean clean water paper towel and lift as much as I can and I'm gonna be going over that with the brown for my roof anyway but don't want all of that to be on there. I guess masking fluid would have worked better. Okay, I've got some more bushes that are going to kind of cover up this corner and then I have some bushes over here and bushes in the front. So I'm going to use my round four for those. Get different shades of green here. And 
and just like we did in the lessons here I'm just mixing up my greens and doing different shades for the different shadowy areas and then adding in some lighter green here and there and then I'm just leaving some of that white space as well some bushes up here. Those are my where my peonies are. And add a few little taller pieces that would be my irises. And then I've got bushes along the side of my house over here. And like I said, I wanted to add in some stuff up here in the front of the house, even though there's nothing currently blooming up there. I just wanted to add something. Maybe eventually I will finish doing some summer landscaping up here. I'm just going to kind of mirror what I did on this side and just add in some of those uh, same strokes. I could even add in a little bit of color. Maybe I have some red flowers coming up in there. That would be nice. I could add a little yellow for maybe some little lilies or something. Just add a little bit of color there. I'm just going to carry those bushes over over here because I don't want to paint my driveway. I'm going to pretend that's a bunch of bushes and trees over there. Okay. So I've got a lot of different texture going on here. I've got some different grass. I've got my sky. I've got all of my trees and bushes around here. So now we can go ahead and actually start painting the house. All right, I'm breaking this up into two sections just because Skillshare has a limit on the file size. So I split the class project up into two parts for you. We did all of the background and trees and foliage first, and then the second part here will be the house itself. Uh, I'm basically mainly gonna use a round size four and a round size one for all of these little details. Uh, you may want to have some bleed proof white handy or a white gel pen if you have white trim that you want to keep really bright white. Otherwise, we're just going to try to avoid any of the white areas as much as possible. So I've got a lot of white trim. Right now my door is white. I'm not a big fan of that. I want to make it more of an aqua color here eventually. And I also want to have shutters on my house, which I don't right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add shutters to my house. And I'm going to go ahead and start with all of those type of elements. I'm going to do the windows and doors first. All right, so you might notice that uh, the windows look kind of dark because the way the, you don't see inside your house, there's no lights on inside. It's daytime, so you don't see inside the windows as much unless you're right up to them. So they're mainly just a really dark color. So I'm gonna do a really dark gray for the center of my windows. All right, I've got a three pane window right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just use that neutral tint I'm going to make those three rectangles. I'm just going to avoid where I want to keep white. I'm just going to do the outlines of those first with my round size one. to 
fill that in. door is a little tricky. Might just make the rectangle and then go back over it with the white gel pen. Yeah, I think that's going to be a lot easier. Okay. I promise once we get past these windows, it gets a lot easier. This is just the really tedious part, is putting in your windows. I'm try to do that with the four this time. I feel like I get a nice straighter line when I do it with the smaller brush. All right, there's the inside of my windows. Now, my front door. Uh, like I said, I it's white right now, but I would much rather it be um, an aqua blue color. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix up my desired color of door here. I really think this is just going to be tailored to whatever colors your house is. white edge that is the trim around the door. Okay, there's my blue door. All right, and I know I originally said I thought I was going to add the shutters, but you know what? I'm not going to. I don't want to do the shutters after all. All right, so I'm going to just let those dry, and before I move back around to the siding, I'm going to go ahead and do my roof line. So I kind of have a little bit of a tan roof and there's some shadows. So I'm gonna do just the wash across it and then we can add some texture to it. Get my, my round four here, get some clean water. And I'm just gonna go on the roof here. And then we can go back over it um, with another layer to add some shadows for where my roof overhangs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead with the sepia, but I'm just going to dilute it. I'm going to get the right brown shade of what I want.
All right, and after that dries, we'll go back over and add a little bit more detail to that just to give it a little more texture so it's not so flat. All right, I think I'll go ahead and I'll do my brick that's down here next. I still have that uh, neutral tin out of my palette, get really light, and I'm just gonna do um, one coat across that very lightly. I'm just going around all of those uh, landscape elements I added in and around my uh, windows so I don't go over top of my trim that I want to remain white. All right, I'll let that dry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do these steps next. They're kind of like a brownish color too. One more of that sepia. And here I'm just gonna go over that and then I'll use my, uh, my grayscale marker I have later to do some shadows over the top. Next will be my siding. So I want to go really, really light gray. So I'm just going to dilute down my neutral tint even more. And then I'm going to do a wash across my entire house. And then I just want to make sure I'm avoiding those soffit areas because those are actually white. So I'm just going to do an even wash across there in clean water. Now, if you are not doing wood siding, you're doing the brick or something, you'll want to just do whatever wash of color you need. So if you need gray for a stone or brown for stone, red for brick, gray for brick, uh, or whatever color of siding, maybe you have a blue house or a yellow house. So do whatever color your house is. In my house, I'll be showing you, I got brick on my house and I've got wood siding on my house. I'm trying to get a nice even coat of water on here so that I don't have any little puddled areas so I don't end up with blooms. I'm just trying to spread that out. It's a little harder to do a wash with a round brush the small than it is to do it with a big flat brush but because of all these little details I kind of have to uh, be very careful going around everything so that I don't go over my white areas and I'll have to go back over those later with the with the blue proof white or a gel pen and that's a little tedious all right so i'm just getting a really really light gray siding up here and then i will use my marker to do my siding board lines my shadow lines afterwards Right. I think my uh, my roof and my stone area, my brick area, are dry enough that I can go ahead and add another little bit of texture over top of the roof and some shadows. So here in my picture, my roof it has this overhang here. It's a split level, so then there's the shadow that goes. So with that same color I did the roof in, I'm just going to add another layer for the shadow. And then up here, you don't really see anything except I'm just going to accentuate the roof line a little bit. 
And then just to add a little texture, I'm just going to kind of go over the roof with some random dashes to kind of give you that texture look without drawing or painting every single little shingle like we're doing the bricks because you're not really seeing it up close. You're just seeing that there's a texture to it. So I'm just making some random dashes here just to give that some texture. And then I would also have some shadowing and stuff here, but I'm going to use my pen for that, this uh, grayscale pen, because that's on white, actually. All right, I'll move down to my gray bricks. So I was using my neutral tint for that. And just like we did in the practice, uh, I'm just going to make those lines across, but I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to use a round size one because it's very small and I don't necessarily need to draw or paint every brick. I just want to give that texture. So I'm just going to make some lines going across and do my rows. All right, well, there is all my textures for my brick and my roof. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my white pen out. I'm going to do the white marks that are in my windows. So I just got, it's a jelly roll pen with white ink. I do have a white stripe across the window here. Like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and work on my shadows now. And I'm going to use this Tombow uh, water based brush marker. It's the N89, it's from the grayscale set. I'm going to use the brush end. I'm going to use this to do all of my roof line shadows and any overhang shadows. I'm basically just going to use this to add that very slight gray tint because I've got this as a white soffit. I just want to make sure I get all of these shadows in there. I'm also just going to go around the edge of where my trim would be, just to kind of accentuate that. I do need to go back over in a few spots and do a little bit of the white gel pen again. Just do this along the edges here just to kind of accentuate that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do my lines for my siding. And like I said, I'm going to use the same pen. I'm just going to do those shadow lines. Now I'm on this side of the window and I want to make sure that I carry over and go across exactly in the same line. 
So if using a ruler or a sheet of paper as your straight edge as a guide would be helpful, then I would recommend doing that. I'm just going to kind of freehand it here though. I just need to add a little bit of shadow here on my steps. Low power. There we go, guys. I am all done. And one more step, if you wanted to, uh, that I've done on an example that I will share with you is that I actually went and took a black pen, like this Pigma Micron pen. And I went around all of the edges of just the house just to keep that as a very central focal point. So that's an option you can do. And I'll show you that example in my projects so that you can see some other variations of ways you can paint your house. Thanks for joining me here on Skillshare today and have a great day.